I'm Simon Watts, a wildlife cameraman and filmmaker, and I've been given the privilege to make this and five more vlogs based on and around the beautiful River Coal. This is a partnership led by Warwickshire Wildlife Trust called Love Your River Coal, hashtag lyric or abbreviated lyric, and funded by the Green Recovery Challenge Fund, which is in conjunction funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Hi guys and welcome to Love Your River Coal Vlog 4, hashtag lyric small I. And I tell you at the start of every Love Your River Coal Vlog that I do love the River Coal. I love it so much because I cut my naturalist teeth in my youth on the banks of the coal itself in Springfield near Moseley. You'll know that of course if you watch the last vlog, Vlog 3, where we went to Sir Hole Mill. Please do have a look if you haven't already. But where are we today? Well, we're in Kingshurst Brook. We're back to where we began because in Vlog 1, if you remember, we came to Kingshurst Brook here in Meriden Park, Shelmsley Wood, to see some major renewal work. Thanks to a partnership between Tay Valley Wetlands, Warwickshire Wildlife Trust, Solihull Metropolitan Council and the guys from Eco Sulis, the major work took place in January. And the idea was, if you remember, Andrew Panashinak, he likened it to narrowing a hose pipe. If you narrow a hose pipe, of course, if you squeeze a hose pipe, the water runs quicker. And how do they narrow the brook? Well, what they did is they used posts and bundles of hazel and tons and tons of gravel. Now, in turn, these sidings, these new sidings with the gravel, were to perform fantastic things for the ecology of this brook. So not only would the brook be flowing itself, but the sides would perform almost like havens for things like spawning fish and the microbiology of the river. Has it worked? I'm stood here right now in the middle of June and I'm telling you, yes, it's worked. It's worked in a massive way. And I'll allude to a few of the areas that I know why it's worked shortly. Now, actually, I was down here originally about two or three weeks ago, and I came down to meet the amazing guys and girls of Tame Force. That's the volunteer group that worked through Tame Valley Wetlands. If you'd like to join them, they would love you to join them. Contact the number now just below, or chase up the details in the description. Honestly, guys, there's no better thing to do than to join Tame Force. I came down here because it was their day on the banks of Kingsless Brook doing some scrub bashing and that meant to remove uh, an invasive plant called Himalayan balsam, which was just, just now coming through. So to nip it in the bud, they all came down en masse to do some invasive action right through the banks here, pulling up all this Himalayan balsam. At the same time, just purely by luck, Andrew Pranashinok, the project leader of that January work, was also here walking his dog. So I managed to catch up with him and the brief of how this place has developed over the last few months. We're here five months down the line at Kingshurst Brook following the big restoration project and everything is coming along nicely. The riffles are in place, they survived the winter flooding. There's lots of clean gravel in the stream now, plenty of uh, riffles to oxygenate the water and the site is greening up absolutely magnificently. We're just coming back here with volunteers now to get on top of invasive species such as Himalayan balsam and to litter pick. So further on, as uh, vegetation comes in, we're hoping for this area to become uh, populated by common reed and bulrush, which will be a great habitat for nesting birds and also help clean up some of the pollution in the river. Again, if you fancy getting involved with Tame Force, the beautiful people of Tame Force, do contact this number below just appearing now or chase it up in the description through the Tame Valley Wetlands website. They would love for you to be part of their gang and do some amazing conservation work. And also, it's just simply great fun. Now, whilst I was here meeting these wonderful people of Tame Force, a lovely soul whispered in my ear about a certain bird that was nesting in this locality, very close to Kingsler's Brook. I couldn't believe what they were telling me when they said what species it was. This nest is a very special nest, so, no, so special it has its own particular name, specified name, and that name is an eerie. That might give you a clue to the species. I said, please, please take me to the spot. Would you mind? And they didn't mind at all. I jumped in the car and I headed down, got out the camera, and this is what I filmed right in the heart of Chelmsley Wood. Yes guys, this is an eerie, and an eerie belongs to a pair of peregrine falcons. The 
the fastest living animal in the world today. When these birds stoop, and the stoop is where they dive upon their prey, they can reach speeds up to 180 to 200 miles per hour. Some of you may be glad to hear that their chosen premium prey are feral pigeons. And the simple fact of them moving in to buildings like this into a very urban environment is because they see them as part of their natural environment. Their natural environment would be cliffs and their natural prey would be rock doves, the origins of the feral pigeons themselves. So in fact, predator has met prey at this time in an artificial environment. You know, sometimes the way we live, these conurbations that we live in, actually suit wildlife. Wasn't that incredible? Peregrine falcons here in Chelmsley Wood. Before I allude to any more wildlife related to Kingsless Brook, yes, there is more exciting news to tell you about the brook itself and the wildlife related to it, especially since the development work in January. Before I allude to that, I want to tell you about another event that I attended here, right here in Meriden Park, and that was about three weeks ago, and it was run by the B37 Project, an amazing project that includes this whole area, this whole community, and they come up with some amazing imaginative ideas to involve the community and bring them all together. Now, what was this particular event? Well, it was a plant swap. I'd never heard of this before, but the, the concept was there and, and it seemed quite simple and it seemed actually quite amazing. The B37 project have run a growing scheme for many years now and the idea was for the people of the growing scheme to come together here in the park, meet at a certain stall and then see what each of them have grown and possibly, should they want to, exchange these plants. But of course that's only just the start of it. Everybody coming down here weren't just exchanging plants. They were exchanging anecdotes and stories, and not just about horticulture, but about life itself. And I expect a few of these people will be leaving, exchanging friendships too. One thing's for certain, every face that I saw had a big smile on it. And that in itself was testament to the success of this event. And it really was successful. Incredible amounts of people turning up, a real hub hub, a real wonderful vibe. Now, I did manage to connect with one of the organisers, that's Helen. I managed to grab her just for a few seconds in between the busy environment, I'm grateful for it. And she told me just quickly about the concept of this particular project. I think we've had more people donate than we've actually given away. Um, but we'll just, we'll just leave them at the swap shop afterwards. We started, we started uh, during the first lockdown. Um, so we're in our, well I suppose we're in our third year now, well, we all thought we were our second year but we're in our third year now um, and it's just been a lifesaver for a lot of people. We, we do send several packs a year actually to, to members of B37 growing together. Um, this year's pack um, was just substantial, the amount of things that were in it and, uh, and, and this is the idea of this because people tend to grow extra and then bring it all down and swap it out so people will use more one of, of, of one vegetable and less of another and vice versa so they, they just get to, to swap it. Well we, we started off with just a few plants originally and they all, they all went within 20 minutes so we've, we've upped the amount of plants that we, that we um, bring in um, because we, we kind of expect it to get a bit busy but it's been not rushed this year which, which is great people have, have kind of come in stages rather than everybody all at once so it's been lovely it's been nice to actually chat with people and get get information from them get knowledge from them that was just such a thoroughly enjoyable morning thanks to Helen and especially to Kevin for inviting me to that. I left feeling humanity was returning to some kind of normality again. Wonderful stuff. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit more about some wonderful, exciting wildlife news regarding this brook, Kingsless Brook, since the development work. Well, when I was here also with Tame Force just those few weeks ago, I decided to go for a little stroll. I'm a naturalist after all, I'm a wildlife filmmaker, and I wanted to see what was around, and especially at that time of the year, this was in the middle of May, to also use my ears and to hear what was calling, because a lot of territorial birds would be around, and they would identify themselves through their call. Well, I couldn't believe it, guys. I entered just the edge of the brook here, and there's a small reed bed, and from that reed bed, I heard a male reed warbler calling. Now, that in itself might not seem too exciting to you, but I'm telling you it is. This reed warbler is a specialist bird, a bird of the wetlands and especially the reed beds. It tells me that it's found a site that it's happy with, with flowing water, of course, lots of invertebrate life. I mean, so happy with it, it's willing to start a family there. 
I decided to come down the next day and try my luck at filming this incredibly elusive bird that hides amongst the reeds. Thankfully, within half an hour or so, I got a sneak peek and just look. Isn't he a handsome chap? I'm assuming it's a he because he's territorial calling. I expect at this point somewhere, the female will be incubating some eggs. Now that's knockout news, it really is knockout news. This bird is a migrant, it's come all the way from Africa, West Africa, and it's a sub-Saharan migrant. So this is one of the birds that's gone terrifically long way and done that huge jump over the Sahara Desert. It's a little hero. I mean, just imagine guys, that this little bird here, in the middle of Chelmsley Wood, in that little reed bed on Kingsley's Brook, when well, you and I are eating our turkey and pulling our crackers, we we'll be eating your nut roast and pulling the crackers on Christmas Day, that little bird will be in the wetlands of West Africa and sharing its environment with the likes of the Nile crocodile and hippopotamus. Just blows your mind. Fantastic. Now actually, whilst I was recording this particular part of the vlog and, and doing a bit of B-roll of the running water, I had another wonderful wildlife encounter right here in the brook and a wonderful wildlife encounter that told me this particular creature was here because of the development. And that was with the stunning little egret. Got some lovely footage for you just now that I managed to take of this egret as it negotiated not only the flowing elements of the water, but also using the gravel sidings here, finding small fish and invertebrate life from the surface. Now little egrets are resident birds here in the UK so you can see that particular species at any point of year on any stretch of the coal but you know for sure that they are here. No better way I think to finish vlog four of love your river coal hashtag lyrics small eye and on that note any stories you've got about the coal itself any history or any anecdotes at all please do attach hashtag lyrics small eye to that stick it on social media so I can read it and maybe feature it in one of the two further final vlogs that we have of Love Your River Coal. But for vlog four, I think we're through. Let's just think again what we've seen in today's vlog. The incredible little egret just there. The amazing fact that we have a peregrinary, the world's fastest animal, is nesting here in the heart of Chelmsley Wood. The beautiful people of Tame Force that have been working here in the brook and only adding to the amazing effect that since the work those few months has had on this particular waterway. And of course, the sole food that was that plant sort of event that Saturday morning with the B37 project. I'm guessing there's going to be plenty more stories to tell in vlog five. Please do join me then. But for now, bye bye.